Example one. f of x equals x squared plus 10x plus 23. Graph the function. Now, to graph a quadratic equation, here are your steps. Find the x-intercepts. Find the y-intercept. Find the vertex. Find the axis of symmetry. Which I'm, I'm going to call AOS from now on. And find one more point. Then connect the dots. Okay, so we have to find these things. Which one of these can I do right now? Okay, so what's the y-intercept? Yeah, so is that at the point 0, 23? Yeah, so it's 23 on the y-axis. Very good. Can we do anything else? No. With a little bit of work? No. What What can we find with a little bit of work? That's Using which method? Well, let's see. What times what is 23? When you add them, you get 10. So you can't factor because 23 is a prime number. So, so we yeah, you use quadratic formula or you could or you could use complete the square. The quadratic formula is less thinking. You don't have to worry about does it factor or not. So we know that a is equal to one, b is 10, c is 23. Just plug it in your equation. So plug them in there. B is 10, so it's negative 10. 10 squared. 4 times 1 times 23. 2 times 1. Try not to bobble head to what I'm doing. Try to do it at your seat. Because eventually, you're going to have to do this on your own.
plug everything in there, you get negative 10 plus or minus square root of eight over two. We know that square root of eight is, is made up of two times two times two. So a two can come out and a two stays in there. There's a pair of twos, this stays in there. On the top, we can factor out a two. So my X intercepts are at negative five plus or minus square root of two. which is negative five plus one, negative five plus or minus one something. The next thing we do is find the vertex. So the x value is negative b over 2a. b is 10. 2 is 1. So it's negative 10 over 2 makes it negative 5. So my x value is negative 5. Don't bobblehead. Uh, you have to learn math. This is stuff you learn in fifth grade. Once you get your X value, this is also called your axis of symmetry. So anywhere you see an X in your equation, put negative five in there. Negative five squared is 25. Minus 10 times five is 50. Plus 23. 25 plus 23 is 48 minus 50. 50 is bigger than 48. It's going to be negative. 50 minus 48 is 2. So the vertex is at negative 5, negative 2. The axis of symmetry is x equals negative 5. Let's go ahead and graph this. I know since the a is positive, and it's an even, I know it opens up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So at negative five plus or minus radical two. Radical two is like 1.1, 1 1.2. 1 so the X intercepts on both sides of five. Or negative five. Negative five, negative two is the vertex. Twenty three is your y intercept.
So from the vertex, if I go five over and up 23, I can go five over the other way. Two, three, four, five, and up 23. And there's my graph, connect the dots. Let's look at example two. Yeah, so this section puts what we just talked about in section one. Oh, question. In this one, do we have a maximum or a minimum value? And it's where? So minimum because it's about, yeah, that's negative five, negative two, right? Negative uh, example two, g of x is equal to x squared over two minus four x plus eight. Same stuff. Let's find the x-intercepts, the y-intercept, the vertex, axis of symmetry, and a point. So now we have to label A B and C. What's A? One half. Because what number's in front of the X? A one, and there's a two below there, so it's one half. B is negative four, and C is Always start off by writing the formula down. And start plugging them in there. So you have a negative. B is negative 4. Negative 4 squared. Minus 4 times 1 times 8. Ooh, that's one half times one half. Negative, negative makes it a positive four. Negative four squared is positive 16. 8 divided by 2 is 4. 4 times 4 is 16. And the 2 and the 2 cancel, so we have 1 on the bottom. 16 minus 16 is 0. Square root of 0 is 0. So it's just x equals 4. Because the discriminant equals zero. We only have one intercept. It's at four. So our axis of symmetry is also four. The y-intercept is at eight.
Let's find the vertex. The x value is at negative b over 2a. Negative of a negative 4. 2 times 1 over 2. So negatives cancel, so it's positive 4. The 2s cancel, so it's 4 over 1 equals 4. You could tell if it was four because because yeah, we only have one. Yeah, that's four well, yeah, because it only has one because it only has one x uh, x intercept that has to be the vertex. Okay. So we know it's going to be four. So you didn't really have to do it. right. We didn't have to do that, but yes, I didn't have to do it. But if I didn't do it, then I have to explain to us. But you're right. The good observation in there on your part. So now we take this value. Plug it inside our equation. We put g of 4. So we have 4 squared over 2 minus 4 times 4 plus 8. Again, we don't have to do this because we know it's going to be what? Where is the vertex? It's on the x-intercept, on the x-axis. We only have one intercept. This is going to be 0. 4 squared is 16. 4 times 4 is 16. 16 divided by 2 is 8. Minus 16 plus 8. 8 plus 8 is 16. Minus 16 is 0. So the vertex is at four comma zero. So the x-intercept is at 4. The y-intercept is at 8. eight. The vertex is at 4. The axis of symmetry is at 4. So the other point we can get is we went 4 to the left and then 8 up. So we can go 4 to the right, 1, 2, 3, 4, and then 8 up. Those, those are mirror images. And then we graph it. And there's our graph. Let's look at example number three. f of x equals negative 2x squared plus 10x minus 23 over 2. See, this is a prime example why you, you wouldn't want to try to factor it. Complete the square would be a lot of work. So just plug them into the quadratic formula. So we need to have x-intercept, y-intercept, vertex, axis of symmetry, and a point. So we know the y-intercept is at negative 23 over 2. A 
A equals negative two, B equals 10, C is negative 23 over two. Squared minus four AC over two A. So it's negative 10 plus minus 10 squared, four times negative two times negative 23 over two. Over two times negative two. negative 10, 10 squared is 100. So look at the signs. Negative times negative is a, ne a positive, times a negative is a negative. The twos cancel. So we have four times 23 is 92 over negative four. Positive has negative is negative too. Negative 10 plus or minus 100 minus 92 is 8. Again, 8 is made up of 2 times 2 times 2. So I can rewrite that as that. Because there's a negative on the bottom, I move it up on top. So I change all the signs up on top. So that becomes a positive 10. This stays plus or minus, so that's not gonna change. So this negative goes up on top and changes everybody's sign. So this positive becomes a negative, this negative becomes positive, I still have plus or minus. I can factor out a two out of the numerator and those cancel. So my X intercepts are at five plus or minus radical two over two. The vertex, my X formula is negative B over two A. My B is 10, so it's negative 10 over two times negative two. Negatives cancel. They both have a two in common, so it's five over two. And now I put five over two back in the equation. Negative two, five over two squared plus 10, five over two minus 23 over two. Five over two is squared, so it's 25 over four. Since we're gonna have denominators, might as well leave that one there. So 10 times five is 50 over two.
the two and the four cancel. So I have negative 25 over two plus 50 over two minus 23 over two Negative 25, negative 23 is negative 48 plus 50 over 2 is positive 2 over 2, which is 1. So what's the, what's this graph going to look like? So we have our vertex that five over two one. The axis of symmetry is x equals five over two. It's the x value. So I have my x intercepts there. So my x-intercepts are at 5 plus or minus radical 2. So it's this is the same thing as 5 over 2 plus or minus radical 2 over 2. So it's 2 and a half plus or minus radical 2 over 2. That's just going to be just a little bit bigger than a half. So we're looking at... Two and a half plus a half, two and a half minus a half. So pretty close to there. And then our vertex is at five and a half, one. We know it opens down because the coefficient's negative. And the y-intercept is at negative 23 over 2. So just since it's 2 and a half this way, then this way. So then it's 2 and a half this way, and likewise, all the way down here. There's that graph. What's the hardest part about this process? Well, or is there one? I mean, it doesn't have to be one if you don't think it's hard. It's just maybe fractions. But if, if, there's too much fractions, if, if it's a fraction, yeah, that, that's that's gonna be the hardest part. But the the x-intercepts, quadratic formula, plug and play. The vertex, plug and play. The y-intercept, just observation. Axis of symmetry. It's the x value of the vertex. Let's look at example four. For the function f of x equals negative x squared plus 14x minus 47, Find the vertex. Is it a max or a min? The range. Where is it increasing? Where is it decreasing?
So which one of these can we do without doing any work right now? No. You can't do the range because why? We know it's a parabola, right? The range is the y values. We have to know where it stops. The domain is everything, but the range starts and stops at a, at a beginning point. The only thing we can determine right now is if we have a max or a min. From this first part, we know it's a quadratic equation, it's a parabola. Which direction does it open? It opens down. So because it opens down, do we have a max or a min? We have a max. We have a high point. Zero work, just because it's an observation. And the max is going to be at the vertex. So A is equal to negative 1. B is 14. And C is negative 47. To find the vertex, we have to find the X value, which is negative B over 2A. So it's negative 14 over 2 times negative 1. Negatives cancel. 14 divided by 2 is 7. So the axis of symmetry is 7. Plug that into your function. Now, the next step is where most students make a mistake. You don't have to play with your phone. No, no, no. And you can calculate this. You can use a calculator. No. <laughs> no, try not to use a calculator. Only use, only use a calculator to check your answers. So what's going to happen here? What's that going to give us? Why not positive 49? Isn't this a negative 7 squared? No. What's more important, multiplications or exponents? Exponents. So we have to do this first. The negative is out in front. There's no parenthesis around the x. There's a difference between this and this. This one is negative x times negative x. This one is negative x times x. You were right the first time, but you change your mind. The negative stays out in front. 7 squared is 49. 7 times 14, so 7 times 4 is 28. 7, 8, 98 minus 47. Combine the two negatives. They're both negative. 49 plus 47 is 96 plus 98. Yeah, it's 96 is bigger, so the answer is negative. Oh, 98, I'm sorry. 98 is bigger, so the answer is positive. 98 minus 96 is 2. So the vertex is at 7, 2. We know it's at 7, and we know it's at 2. And we also know it opens down. So what's my range?
Is that true? Remember, this needs to read left to right. Is two smaller than negative infinity? You're right. It's just that you have to put the smaller number first whenever you do intervals. Very, very good though. You, you notice where that two is the maximum, it stops there. So it goes from negative infinity all the way up to two and it's including two. That's the range. So now tell me the intervals where it's increasing, where it's decreasing. Where is it increasing? I want the interval. I don't want to round. I want the interval. Where is it going up? Six and two. How do you determine if a graph is increasing? What do you do? Read it left or right. That's the easiest to, instead of reading it, put your pen there. Is the graph going up or down on your pen? It starts here, it's going higher on the pen. So that's increasing. It's increasing because this Y value is less than that Y value. So as I go left to right, this point is lower than this point. So it's increasing from negative infinity to seven. You only deal with the X axis. Where is it decreasing? then it's decreasing from everything after that. Okay, so these are examples of finding the vertex, the x-intercept, the y-intercept, the axis of symmetry. Which form were our equations in? Standard. But we have another form. Vertex form. To get to the vertex form, to get to the vertex form, use complete the square. and stop when you get to that's that part. So to use the complete the square method, I have to put it in a standard form. It has to be equal to zero. Is A one, 
Yes. So we move the eight over. Then we have to add the B over two squared to both sides. Remember B is the number in front of X. On the left-hand side, only do what's inside the parentheses. Only do what's inside the parentheses. Don't square it. On the right-hand side, work it all the way out. So we have negative 8 plus 9 is positive 1. So whatever's under the squares and the first sign. So stop there. The third step is move the constant back to the left. So set it equal to zero. Now you're in vertex form. That's vertex form. Why do they call it vertex form? Because the vertex is HK. Yeah, similar to what we did in circles. So the vertex of this equation is negative three, negative one. It's always the opposite sign and it is what it is. Yeah, it's the X value, yeah. Here's an example. Tell me the X intercept, the Y intercept, the vertex, and axis of symmetry. and graph it. If I give you the equation in vertex form, So with this equation, what can you tell me? Just looking at it real quick. 
What's the vertex? One and three. Remember, if it's outside, it is what it is. It's positive three. It only changes on the inside of Pensu. So the vertex is one and three. What else can you tell me? X equals one. What else can you tell me? What direction is your graph going to go? Down. Why do you say down? What determines if it goes up and down? A. If A is positive, it goes up. If it's A is negative, it goes down. Since that's positive, we know the graph's going to open up. So what's our x-intercept? Think of back to the beginning. How do you find the x-intercept? Set it equal to zero. And solve for x. So first thing we do is subtract three from both sides. So we have negative three equals two x minus one squared. Divide both sides by two. We have x minus one squared equals negative three over two. To get the square out of there, we have to square root both sides. We have x minus 1 equals plus or minus, uh-oh, there's a negative inside there, so it's imaginary. No x-intercepts. because it's imaginary. Then to find the y-intercept, what do you do? How do you find the y-intercept? Set x equals zero and solve for y. So set x equals zero. Zero minus one is negative one squared. Negative one squared is one. Two times one is two. Plus three is five. My y-intercept is at five. It opens up. The y-intercept is at five. Should have put it one, two, three, four, five, six. So my vertex is at one, three.
it crosses at five. So it's from the vertex up over one, up two. So we do the same thing, go over one, up two. There's my graph. Because of the symmetric properties. All right, let's look at the word problems. Number five, maximizing area. This is a real world application. A landscaper has enough stone to enclose a rectangular koi pond. This is example five. So he wants a rectangular koi pond. It looks like that. To, ex to an existing garden wall. So there's going to be a wall. A house with 24 feet of stone. So all of this has to have 24 feet of stone. If the garden wall forms one side of the rectangle, what is the maximum area? So I'm looking for the max area that the landscaper can enclose. What are the dimensions of the koi pond? the length and the width. So I know I have 24 feet of stone and it has to go through this. So what formula do I have so far that deals with that idea? Not area. I have 24 feet of stone. I can only put, whatever I put, both of these have to be the same. And then I have this. What is that called when I'm looking at just the outside? Perimeter. The perimeter of this one is the width plus the width plus the length. So I have 24 total feet. I have two W plus L. So I know that whatever, whatever it all depends, whatever the width is, then I have to find the L. So to find the L, I subtract both sides by two W. Now I can find the area inside there since I have the dimensions. So the area is length times width. The length is 24 minus 2w times w. Get rid of the parentheses, so I have 24w minus 2w squared. But at this point here, if we set this equal to zero, we'll have 24 minus 2w equals 0, and w equals 0. At w, This is a w, this is the l. 
So what this thing says is the maximum width I can have is 12 feet. If I put 12 feet uh, widths, then they have to be touching. There's no area. Or if I don't have any width, it's also zero. I don't have any area. Anything else between there will have to be in this curve because it's quadratic. It's quadratic. How do I find the maximum number? This is the area now. How do I find the maximum area? That's the vertex. Where A is negative two, B is 24, and C is zero. There's no constant. Whatever's in front of your X squared is A, Whatever's in front of the single one is B. Negative B over 2A. So I have negative 24 over 2 times negative 2. Negative 24 over negative 4. Negatives cancel. 24 divided by 4 is 6. Well, I knew that was going to happen. Because remember, the vertex is symmetric. The vertex in quadratic equations, it's always mid midway between your x-intercepts. Because that's your axis of symmetry. So when x when your width is six, what is the area? Go back to this equation right here. The area was 24 minus 2w times w. We're saying that w equals 6. That's going to that's going to be the point of the highest area. 24 2 times 6 times 6. 24 minus 12 times 6, 12 times 6 is 72 feet squared. So your large maximum area for your koi pond is 72 square feet. Do one more. We don't have time. Example six. The height of a rocket. It says a model rocket is launched with an initial velocity of 100 feet per second. So the initial velocity of 100 feet. Per second from the top of a hill that is 20 feet high. So that is 20 feet. So the height is 20 feet. Its height in t in feet t seconds 
after being launched is given by the function, the position at time t is equal to negative gravity t squared plus your initial velocity t plus 20. Determine the height, determine the time in which the rocket reaches its maximum height and find the maximum height. First off, let's look at this. This is an equation. Because what this thing's saying is our rocket is here and it's going to take off like that. But what we can do is if we drew a line like that and like this, then those would be our x intercepts. It's given, the position function is given by this. So when t equals zero, this is t equals zero, it's at 20 feet. Why is it negative 16? Because this first one is the force of gravity. Gravity is at 16 feet per second squared. It's negative because gravity goes down. This is the velocity the speed of the rocket going up. So the gravity and the rocket have different directions. So they have different signs. The rocket's going up, gravity's going down. So we, we, we need to find two things. We need to find the maximum height and the time it takes to get to that height. So how do we do that? And 20, that's your initial height. So this one is with 20. This one takes it from here to here. So how do we find all that stuff? At what time is it gonna be here? At what time will it be back at 20 feet high? What's that? But how do we find this point? So we use which formula? You're right, it is. It's going to be the x-intercept, yes. So we have to set this equal to zero. Yeah. The quadratic's always going to be the, the easiest way to help you out of anything. So A is equal to negative 16. B is 100. C is 20. Here we're solving for t. So negative b, b squared, 4ac, over 2a. So negative 100. What's 100 squared? It's going to be 100 times 100. 1 times 1 is 1 and put four zeros behind it. It's 10,000. Negative and a negative makes it a positive. 
four times 16 is 64. 64 times 20 is 128 with a zero behind it. Plus two times 64 is 128 with a zero over negative 32. Ten, so it's 10,000, no, 11,280 over negative 32. These guys change signs. Now it's easier if you use a calculator. Find out what the square root of 11,280 is. One hundred and six point two. So we have one hundred plus or minus one oh six point two over thirty two. So we have one hundred plus one oh six point two over thirty two. And T2 is 100 minus 106.2 over 32. Okay, notice on this side here, we're going to have a negative 5.8. 6.2, I mean. Hmm. Why is that negative 6.2 over 32? I don't know, but there has to be a reason for it. And on this side, we're going to have 206.2 over 32. Why is this one negative? It has to do with our original problem. Remember, this is 20 feet high. We launched our rocket. These find our x-intercepts. Since this one goes all the way down here, it goes at 103.1 seconds. This one, if we continue back, it'll be back here at negative, whatever negative 6.2 over 32 is. Negative 0.2. So this one's at negative 0.2. We started off at 20 feet, but if we took it back further to the touch of the ground, it would touch the ground at 0.2 seconds before we took off. Now we have a parabola. So now we gotta find the vertex. How do we find the vertex? Yep, you can use that. 
So the vertex negative 16 T squared, 100 T plus 20. So the vertex is an equation, negative B over 2A and the function at negative B over 2A. A is negative 16, B is 100. So negative 100 over 2 times negative 16 is negative 100 over negative 32. 100 divided by 32 3.125. So the rocket will reach the highest point after 3.125. Take this value, plug it back in here. We have negative 16, 3.125, 100, 3.125, plus 20. Negative 16 times 3.125 to the power 2 plus 100 times 3.125 3 plus 20. It will reach a maximum altitude of 176. 0.25 feet. That's how physics works. All right, everybody. Sorry, but um, okay, we finished this one. We finished section two, I believe that was. Yeah, uh, section three.